Jim Moore Jr. said this about my next guest. Having been a teammate, climbing partner, and friend of Mark's for over 35 years, I can say without hesitation that he's a man of tremendous integrity, moral conviction, and mental toughness. His ability to both lead from the front and be a core team member speaks to both his strength of conviction as well as his selfless attitude. Mark has a vision and an energy that others are naturally drawn to. His ability to inspire others with both his words and actions are beyond compare. This is a man that has reached the highest peaks professionally as an NFL player, in business, as an entrepreneur, as a father, and as a high altitude mountain climber. Mark, pretty high praise there from your old buddy, uh, Jim Moore Jr., who now is the new uh, head coach at UConn. And having known you a little bit, I have to concur, mm -hmm. my friend. That's so nice. You are, you are uh, without compare and uh, you have, I don't want to say you have reinvented yourself, but you have certainly found a way to channel your energy in a myriad of ways, very productive and really meaningful. It, it, when I think of you, Mark, I think of like a guy that has like great quality of life and peace. And it wasn't always like that, right? Yeah. Some things happened in your life yeah. that maybe... Oh, put that in focus, made that a priority for you. And so as we're sitting here and you're sitting where? South America? Yeah, in Ecuador, about ready to take on another 20,000 foot mountain. Yeah. So what led to this 20,000 foot mountain and the seven summits and being called the summit master? What can you take me? I have time. Yeah, you yeah. Do. And now the great Dane he is. Um, you know, first of all, Morton, I want to say thank you so much. We've been friends for a long time. And when I got traded from yeah. the, the Raiders to, to New Orleans, you know, I walked in that locker room and you're the first guy that came over to me. And I always thought it was a really bizarre existence. I told you this way back when, you probably don't remember this, but um, you were, I mean, I'm just going to call, you know, the spade, the spade. And you were the su superstar of that locker room. And I'd never been in any environment because we had, I always played for winners, always. And up until that year that I got there in 1987, um, the New Orleans Saints had never won, had a winning season. And so we go strolling in and I came from the Raiders, Howie Long, Matt Millen, Jim Plunkett, Marcus Allen. I mean, you had two Heisman Trophy winners on the team, right? And then I show up and, you know, you are we're just beloved in the town of New Orleans, and you took me in and you and I really developed a fantastic friendship, uh, palling out, um, going all around and doing what we were doing. And, and, you know, so I've really valued that, 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 that friendship that uh, we've had. And then it was probably four or five years ago when you were inducted into the uh, uh, New Orleans Saints Hall of Fame ring and ring, uh, you ring invited me down ring of honor. And it was just a great honor to be included in that. And so I, I thank you for that. Um, as far as Jim Moore is concerned, um, I'm so happy for him. He's the new head coach at Connecticut. He des deserves all that. He's just a fantastic mentor and coach. And he's been, you know, the best friend that a guy could have um, sticking with me through thick and thin over all these years. And then your final point about, you know, uh, reinventing, you know, I look at it, I've had to make multiple pivots, right, to keep going. And I think, as you know, Martin, because you've been, you've been able to do this successfully, um, being able to have a 25 year NFL career, which is like ins totally insane. Uh, mine was five years to 25 <laughs> and to even have half of that would be insane. And you did that and more and, and to be able to turn around and, and continue you know, these new ventures that you, the, you've, you found yourself in now podcasting. I know you have other interests as well. And for me, you know, when I came out of football, I've been doing that one thing. You can relate to this, that one thing for so long totally focused on just football, really 10 years, because five years of college and then five, five years in the NFL. And I was so committed to it. And then I just, I, I just went completely off the, 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 the cliff and it was awful. And it was absolutely awful for me for two years. And so I got into business and life and things happen. And, and so anyways, the net net is, hold on. You said you went off the cliff. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. No, I will. It's just, I think when you are so driven and focused about doing one singular thing 
And I realized I really didn't have any skills to do anything else. I mean, I was a nice guy and things like that. But in terms of going in and helping companies, you know, like I do today, I'm an executive for Sports Illustrated and, you know, learning the craft of business and the internet and the way things work. And I've started several different companies and, you know, it just, I had to surround myself and learn the game of business and find mentors that could really help me along the path to show me how to do things what was wrong, what was right, and lead by example from them, their leadership I'm talking about, uh, so that I could have a path toward success. And I think there's also something to, Morton, you've always been really astute in this area, and that is the power of curiosity. And you've always, you know, you're, you're from Europe, and you've always had this fascination with France and grapes and, you know, all kinds of different things in your life. And, and that's one thing I always really appreciated about you is you were a really interesting dude. And you can only get interesting if you're really curious and you're curious, yeah. then you start to learn. Right. I like and that. that. I, mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that has been kind of a through line for both of us. And certainly in my case, on these different things I've been involved in and, you know, the last 10 years, um, even though I've been working full time to monetize sure. my life, um, transitioning that pivot once again into the mountains after going through a rough patch yeah. um, in my life, you know? Yeah. Did you, I, this happened to me when I left football. I, as you said, I played a lot longer than you did. So maybe you didn't experience it at the same level I did uh, as far as the, the impact. I, I thought I was ready, Mark, to step back from football, new chapter, exciting times. Oh, have more free time with the family and with friends and to play golf. And I, I got to be honest with you, waking up every day thinking it's Saturday again today was yeah. got got boring real fast and there was a void in my life and i i sought some help uh with the uh with the gentle nudging from my wife right she said go go get some help or or we we can't figure it out here so because yeah i was drinking too much i was uh it was a pity party Mm -hmm. if you will yeah and i i think what football allowed me to do was to be part of that team right but also to be the man as you were saying and that was all I knew too, kind of. And when that was ripped away, when that was taken away, when that last game was played, when that last ball was kicked, you know, it still surprised me how powerfully I reacted in a negative way. Did that happen to you too? It did. And it did. I don't think it really mattered. Or less. No, I, yeah. it, it was, it, it uh, you know, we, we certainly, our energy was channeled the same way. Um, yeah. I don't know if it was more or less, I mean, I'm not here to judge that, but, you yeah. know, it's a, it's a steep fall you know, when you come off that mountain and it, you, you, in all these business things that I've done over the years, um, you know, you, you work away and you work away and you work away. And, and then, you know, it's not like catching that touchdown in the last minute or when I was down in the, um, in the, the Atlanta dome, I don't know what they call that, that, you know, when you Georgia, the dome. Last second, Georgia dome, when you kick the last second field goal against Pittsburgh, it's not like that. Right. And you don't get yeah. like the last second in the motion and that, you know, the build up and, and you're making great money and just, you know, it's just a different world, but somehow or another, we all have to take that same energy and transition it into something mm-hmm. new and understand that new purpose. Yeah. And you did, and you did it in an interesting way. Uh, and I think to your earlier point about curiosity, I, you strike me as a real, real a guy that will ask a lot of questions. And I think you made a very valid point about mentoring and about asking questions. Let's face it, if we don't know, we can't go. So let's ask questions, advice, and so forth. I do that too. I learned that from, you know, just failing miserably and and figuring this doesn't work. So let me start asking questions. And when I look at your business ventures, it's impressive. I mean, your resume, Mark, holy cow. But there's a common thread through all your business and entrepreneurial uh, endeavors. You take a company and you become usually a, a senior vice president of marketing and business development, and you build that company up and then the company sold for a shitload of money. So it's almost like, a, are you a turnaround guy? Would you say you're a turnaround guy or are you a development guy? Where is your passion in business? Like what? What gets your what gets the adrenaline pumping? Not to the level of game day Sunday, but you know where where are you there? Because it it looks from the outside looking at all these projects that you have successfully done. Mm-hmm. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah, I wouldn't say a turnaround. Um, I I I'm, I think I'm I'm really good at getting things. You know, creating 
something out of nothing and then taking it to a certain level. I'm, I'm actually, this is the first, first time in my life um, I've, I've been in where I'm at. Um, a, again, I'm, I'm an executive of Sports Illustrated, but five years yeah. ago, we started this technology company and I'll make this story short, but that's what it was, a technology company. And there were multiple, multiple times that we were ready to just, you know, the, 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 the machine was going to die. And we started with 18 em, employees and then a couple Hail Mar Marys happened and lucky thanks and lucky breaks. And we happened to be in the right place at the right time. And two years ago, where there was an opportunity to take over Sports Illustrated, mm -hmm. and we did. Um, and in the uh, in the digital media world, um, they there's there's rankings. ESPN is number one, and when we came in, uh, Sports Illustrated was number twelve in the marketplace. Um, and I've uh, taken them to number six. Um, we they were doing twenty two million unique visitors per month, and on Comscore, that's um, that's the Probably. equivalent of what. Um, Nielsen ratings would be for television, like ABC, yeah. NBC. So you're a network, right? We sure. created our own network. And so we've taken, and you know, right now, man, I've, I've got our site set at ESPN and number one, I think we'll take them out in, in, you know, three years, within three years, based on the business model that we're doing. I have complete conviction on that. And so it's a different scale, but it's the same exact same thing as what you and I were doing. Um, those, those, those cornerstone, um, daily discipline with high commitment about yeah. going out there. In your case, you kick and kick and kick and kick, and you know the the angles, the mental rehearsals, the discipline. So the mental, that. it's all the same thing. It's having that blueprint, and I've done that in football. I've done that in mountaineering. I've done that in business, and every single time, I've got my 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 key things. You know, step into the fear, do yeah. it with daily discipline, and then commit. Because most people, as you know, Morton, um, is is that they it, it's more of a New Year's resolution. Where yes. they 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 say okay I'm gonna do something I've never done before and they jump into it and they get going three four months and then they fall off the wagon and they just like this is too hard and so they don't they're not fully committed to what they want to get done. Yeah, you're right. And you know, with with kicking, just to your point, I would define my workbench, I would train my workbench, and then I would own my workbench. Those three things, completely what you just said about your business endeavors, your mountaineering and. It, same thing just set differently if we don't know we can't go you know if we don't know what's in front of us what it is that we're trying to scale what we're trying to accomplish let's honestly brutally look at that number one right and say here it is right in front of me then look at yourself obviously say what's my skill set and what will it take training wise to to you know get in front of this challenge and do it and then repetitively doing it over and over again, a monotonous thing. I'm sure when you're training for, you know, climbing, climbing the biggest mountains in the world, it can get a little monotonous. It can get a little like the world of suck. And I think <laughs> yeah. when we embrace the world of suck, I talk about it a lot. Yeah. When we embrace the distasteful and the undesirable, that's when we grow as human beings. Yeah. Yeah, I sure do. And I just, I was just looking up while you're, um, cause I, 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 I'm really inspired by listening to other people and what they have to say. And so I write these things down and there was something when you're talking about vision, it's, you know, it's obviously it's hard to go any place. If you don't have a vision, you don't know where you're going. And it's, yeah. it's like live your vision, not your circumstance. And I think too many people get caught up in the moment and at the time. And like my case, you know, I, I ultimately got cut, you know, I'd love to say I retired like you, but I didn't, I got cut and it wasn't fun, but then you have to turn around and rather than wallow in the negativity around, Oh my God. Yeah. And how do I do? And I, yeah, I still thought I had three more years or whatever. You got to start thinking about what's your vision for the future. And then you have a, you have a, this is where I want to go. And then you have the blueprint of how that's all going to happen. And again, mm -hmm. that's translated for these, uh, these mountains and these different businesses and I've also tried to do with relationships too, you know, to foster those in that same way. I call it a uh, plug and play philosophy. Mm. It's really what it is because you can, it, it travels well. You know, if you, if, if you have what we just spoke about and you carry that with you in your luggage, that's, that's a really powerful tool to have with you, whether you're sitting in Sun Valley in Atlanta or in Ecuador. <laughs> and, you know, the reason you're in Ecuador right now is exciting too. And I watched the documentary, Finding Your Summit. I've watched, I've, I've been on your podcast and you've done hundreds of podcasts, uh, uh, really well done. 
lo loads of interesting people on there. And I love being on that show. But I want to talk about that shift you, 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 you already mentioned. And you live, you reside in Sun Valley. What is it about the mountains? And what is it about wanting to now I know why because of your daughter and epilepsy and where you know there's a charitable arm to your yeah. madness if you will and it's beautiful um so I, I don't know where you want to start Mark but I'm so fascinated by the fact that you really I mean you threw a really big thing up on the board right there on that on that chalkboard and said yeah I can do that and if I I, I knew yeah. I couldn't do it. Okay. So I'm just going to be yeah. upfront about that. You're, you're in really good physical shape. You've trained PT is a really big part of your life, but also the mental strain and the emotional strain and the time commitment and the sacrifice from everybody else. So take me through that whole thought process. Talk to me about that project and about the movie and about that whole thing that just came, came through, through that television beautifully, man. Really well yeah, done. you're talking about the NFL film Searching for the Summit. Uh, for anybody who's listening, you can see that in YouTube right now. But it really documented, uh, in particular, my last mountain. I was just on, on Mount Everest. Um, and, it, and it really then backed up a little bit and chronicled the other six mountains. So to complete the seven summits, there's only two NFL players have done that. And Morty, I'll, I'll go back, you know, 10 years and, you, you know, you just teed it up for me to like, you know, kind of where did this whole thing start? And, you know, I was going through a rough patch in my life and, and I was going through a divorce after being married for so long and, and uh, it just wasn't working. And I tried to hang in there for a number of years. And at the same time, or roughly about the same time, my dad died of a massive stroke, you know, three months, you know, it happened. We tried to get him recovered and then he, he passed, fortunately, just because he was in such rotten shape. But, you know, it was just a really turning moment in my life. Just like, what is, where am I going? I was really lost. And so, um, I really had to kind of really get off the, the sidelines and get back in the game of life. And the only way I could think about doing that is doing something so magnificent and so extraordinary that it wasn't just a 10 K or it wasn't just a marathon or something like that, or some mm -hmm. mountain, you know, in the Northwest, yeah. but it was something that could, you know, so, so I put out this goal. I typed in the, uh, in the browser, computer browser, went home and like, has any NFL player ever climbed the seven summits at the time? And the answer was no. And so I'm going to be that guy. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I didn't, I mean, you know, I hadn't done high altitude mountaineering. And so it's something I wanted to do, but it gave me the extra juice. It gave me that extra energy, right? To really like get fueled up about something because I've been down in the dumps for a number of years and I just didn't feel good about myself and where my life was happening or where it was going. And so going back to that word commitment, um, I started to get into the mountain. I got the blueprint. And the blueprint showed that you don't start with Mount Everest. You start with some of these other mountains. I started this first one in Mount Kilimanjaro down Tanzania. And it's a little bit like you don't go from little league football. Um, yeah. In your case, you didn't even play little to league the NFL. soccer to the NFL, right? right? Yeah. It's not yeah. one big jump. You got to no. take all these, you know, micro steps as you make your way up. And so ultimately um, it took me nine years to complete seven mountains. And, um, you know, I was supposed to go to Mount Everest in, uh, 2020 and then uh in the march if we all go back march 2020 um the world shut down and it was highly disappointing and so you know i said to myself and this is after going through like oh my god how could this be and i was really disappointed i said you know what i'm going to reset my goals and i'm going to double down and so i said at the time i'm going to go climb mount everest and then i'm going to come down jump my tent and go up and climb the fourth highest mountain in the world called lozi and um i'm going to I start this campaign called Amelia's Everest. My daughter Amelia has epilepsy and to see if we can drive some awareness because I was starting to get a bunch of attention for through the NFL and other sources like that. So, you know, I put it out there and, and we started to raise money and the NFL threw money in, the Raiders threw money in. And, you know, it was just a, a really, yeah. like you said, a beautiful thing. And then yeah, fast forwarding, you know, getting to Mount Everest um, this last year, that was just a, crazy experience I almost died up there on summit day you're there for two months you got to acclimate um you know for two two months like i said you know i'm living at seventeen thousand five hundred feet you're in atlanta you're at sea level you know so i mean thousand it was feet, just, actually thousands. yeah a thousand feet yeah so i mean it was just a the whole thing i could go on and on as much as you want me to but 
you know, I do want to hear about it. I do want to hear about it. I want to get the, uh, the the listeners up to speed on the seven summits. So you mentioned Mount Kilimanjaro, the tallest mm -hmm. peak in Africa. Then yep. you have Mount Elbrus. Yep, in Russia, which and is the highest uh, highest in Europe. And then you have Mount Kosciuszko. Yeah, in a very, very uh, well done with that pronunciation. That's in Australia. And then you have Aconcagua. Yeah, not not quite. Aconcagua. Aconcagua. I'm, I'm, I'm clear on one thing. You can actually only say that mountain if you actually climbed it. Otherwise, you're tongue twisted. <laughs> okay, man. I didn't earn the right. I didn't earn the right. Yeah, no. We have, uh, we have Denali in Alaska, of course. Well, we, but in Denali, how about this? That was 2017, which was my sh first shot at it. And uh, I got up there and we got in this awful um, snowstorm. And it, it's a hard mountain. It's hard, not because of the height. It's uh, just under 21,000, but because yeah. uh, you have this cold air coming off the Barren Sea and it's so unstable in that part of the Northwest and going yeah. up into Alaska. And uh, we ran into minus 80 degree temperatures. And so we got pushed back and you have to carry your own weight. So Mar Morty, I was carrying oh, 137. No, Sherpa, no Sherpas. No Sherpas, no porters. So I was carrying 137 pounds up that mountain. And that's hard. So you just started, um, you know, I always play a, a name game with my guests and it's yeah. usually about, it's usually about people. It's usually uh -huh. about people in your life, uh, coaches, players you played with, but in your case, I'm going to do it differently. All right. And well, wait, just, wait, 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 before you go to the name game, I got to finish my mountains really quickly. That, well, that, that the name game is the mountains. Okay. Go ahead. Go. It, so I'm going to, I'm going to name a mountain and you tell me about your experience on that mountain and what it was like to face that monster yeah each mountain okay? yeah go and so the first one i want to talk about is mount kilimanjaro uh first learning experience i was able to go back and do that mountain again with chris long howie long's son who you probably water know boy, chris, water boys yeah. with water boys and that really turned me my mind thinking about giving back and paying it forward hmm. what was the most difficult uh challenge of Kilimanjaro it sits out in the middle of the Serengeti almost like it's and it just pops out of nowhere right and it's a gradual thing it's not it's not as steep as some of the other ones it is steep on the final day it's steep when it gets from 15,000 to 19,333 feet and you got to be ready for it and the the in particular the second time I went with I think seven other NFL players and some military people I yes. mean all the NFL guys just got sideways because they weren't used to the the altitude Everybody made it, which was great, but they had to gut it out. One guy went blind. Chris Long almost fell off the mountain. He was so delirious. Another guy fell over. He was lying back for the Chargers because he was low on O's. And I, so it was chaos up there. Um, mm. But, you know, it's it's not, you know, it's it's relatively a fun climb to go do. But, you know, again, the last day, it gets pretty steep. Yeah, and altitude it fools no one, right? You mean it is what it is. It is what it is, and and you know it's not it's not dangerous. There's no crevasses, and you don't have to rope up and things like that. But it's just a big punch, you know, going from fifteen thousand to nineteen thousand four four thousand feet up. Um, it's a big day, and coming all the way back down, and you know, yeah. going back to a, a lower camp around ten thousand feet. It's a lot of work. Yeah. All right, Mount Elbrus. Mount Elbrus. Um, that was an interesting mountain, you know, when, when else do you go to Russia? But the one thing that really opened my eyes about that, we ran into a electrical storm up on top of the mountain. Oof. You literally couldn't see, you know, five feet past your no nose. And so we were literally in the clouds. Uh, the, the electricity was coming down, the lightning was coming down and everybody was running for cover, but there's no place to run because there's no tree line to run yeah. for. And uh, as we were going down, uh, there was another fellow climber that got hit by lightning and died. And so that was the kind of where it really woke me up to like this mountain climbing business is serious. Yeah. I mean, what was that a, a, a difficult proposition to get all the permits to go to Russia? Uh, no, not so much about that, but it's just, you know, getting down into Caucasus Mountain. It's down there by where Sochi was. It was just different planes, trains, automobiles. Uh, ah. Earlier in that year, Russia had shut down a plane from Ukraine. And so, you know, yes. tensions were really high. And, you know, I, as an American, I was just trying to like yeah. be low blend key in. on that blend oh, yeah. in and, yeah, and drink, you. drink lots of vodka. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that they do, my friend. Yeah. All right. Kosciuszko. Mount Mount, Kosciuszko. Yeah. Mount Kosciuszko is, Mount Kosciuszko. yep. Um, there's a, there's a fantastic 
movie for anybody out there called Man from Snowy River, uh, starring Kirk Douglas. Um, it takes place in the snowy um, mountains, and uh, it, I call that the Fun Seven. It's a it's a hike any really anybody can do, um, and it's just a you know great ten hour, not too steep, you know roundabout, and you know it's you knock it off and you get to be in Australia, and the people are so wonderful down there. What was the elevation of that mountain? Oh, uh, we we're like eight thousand, eight nine thousand. Oh, really? It, okay, yeah, it so wasn't that, a big deal. Yeah, it's Sun Valley. Check, yeah, it's Sun Valley. Yeah, yeah you check you're checking the box. You're checking the box. Aconcagua. Aconcagua, yeah, that might have been one of my funner uh, uh, experiences. You know, you're up there for it. it you're starting to get um, fairly high. Is the first time I'd, I'd gone twenty three thousand feet. Um, uh, uh, you're down there in uh, Mendoza. Mendoza is very famous for the Malbec grape, um, mm. you know, wine. Sure. Yeah. And it was it was the first time that I really experienced that, and really had a good group. And even though that again, going back to, you know, be careful what you ask for 12 of us started, only six of us made it. Um, the altitude, you know, really hit some people. And, and when you start to get um, uh, cerebral edema, your, your brain starts to, to fill wow. the water. Yeah, it's really interesting, because you're looking at these people in their eyes, and they literally are punch drunk, you know, they look like they've had 15 shots of Jägermeister. I mean, they're just looking sideways. And <laughs> and it's it's just like you it's 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 big i mean you got to get these people down fortunately yeah. we had other um guides to 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 bring those folks down um but you know it's like everybody starts off with great aspirations and we had a fantastic group but again only six of the 12 made it and you kind of touched on denali anything you want to add there you're carrying your own gear it's uh it's a big mountain it's cold right i mean it's really cool. Denali. Yeah, Denali. Yeah. yeah, Denali. So I was able to go back and successfully do that the second year in 2018. I had to go back and I was just going to, it's so painful and so tough to carry that 137 pounds up that mountain and climb. There's the first time I climbed an 800 foot ice wall. And it's scary. Um, oh, and goodness. the first year in 2017, we had a guy from the Philippines um, literally actually he was from Taiwan, just lay down and said, I'm not going in. He was going to die. And we were, we were caught in an awful spot and a storm was coming in. And, and again, it's just, it, you know, what that really reminded me of is just the reliance on your teammates. I mean, think about, you know, your great career, but all the great people, the holders that you had, oh, yeah. um, right. Yeah. And the yeah. center and the snap and the line protecting you. I mean, if you don't have the right teammates up there, it can have a devastating impact on everybody. Oh my God. Yeah. And then Antarctica and the Vincent Massif. Was that? Um, that was incredible. And it was incredible for so many different reasons, just because, you know, it's the last frontier, nothing lives out there except for penguins. And, and to get down there, you know, you go to the tip of, of Chile and then you take a, a charter, um, which was a Russian old plane that looks like it's going to crash. And as you're flying over there, you literally uh, are flying over there in your full gear, like all your boots and everything else. Because if we crash, you know, it's so cold that you're going to die and you got to be prepared, you know, if that actually happens. And so it's a crazy trip. Um, that was kind of marked. It was interesting because one of the guys um, I was, which was my temp mate, we were down there three weeks. My temp mate was a guy by the name of Don Cash. And he was a guy that was not prepared, um, didn't do well, did summit on that. But a couple of months later in 2019, um, he was scheduled to go up to Mount Everest and he, he died um, on Everest. Um, mm. You know, if we all go back and we remember that big, long line and, you know, it took him forever to get up oh, there and he God. wasn't prepared. He got up there, raised his hand, fell over and died. And when I was up there this last year on Mount Everest, I literally stepped over his body and it was it was pretty surreal to do that. Yeah, and you're, you're stepping over his body. You're stepping up over a lot of bodies. Yeah, because they just they left there to die, and there's there's no way to get them down. I guess because helicopters can't get go that That's high. Right. right? That's right. You can only you're in the you're in the death zone uh, over eight thousand meters. Death zone, right? Yeah, so, a third of oxygen yeah. breathing. Yeah. So like the, yep. So the the helicopters can only go up to uh, twenty. 1,500 feet and we you know we're up there you know the top of Everest is 29,000 feet so the helicopters can't get that high 
Um, and then it's just way too steep and dangerous in every way you can possibly imagine to try to bring uh, a person who's, who's, who's passed, you know, like that, you know, down that mountain. I mean, in my case, you know, you're just doing anything and get your own self down, let alone yes. jeopardize everybody else in that group. I read some things that you wrote about Everest and about going snow blind and scrapping plans to do Lutze because the plan was to do Everest and then go down to camp four and then go to Lutze. Was that what, what yeah. you were planning to do? Yeah. You know, more. And it was, it was a real bummer. People have asked, would you go back and do it again? And my answer is I'd like to do that one day again. I'd like to do that one day over. Cause I think I could have been so much better and I wasn't. And, you know, and it's really started a couple of days before that, which we, we started up the mountain, the weather had been the whole time had been really awful. And, and so we had the, the jet stream, um, sits on top of, of Mount Everest up in the death zone majority of the year, except for two weeks during um, the springtime and two weeks in the fall. But it's, it's not exactly like you're getting out of school. Like it's this date and that date. It's whenever the weather, but it can lift. It can. So it's blowing 300 miles per hour up there, except for certain days in the spring. And so we started up the mountain and we found ourselves three days in a cyclone. Um, and we were in a bad spot in this cyclone. Um, I don't do well with freeze dried food. We were eating freeze dried food. It was just coming right back up. And so I basically didn't eat for three days. And then when we got up on the, on the morning of the 23rd to go for the, for the summit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. And we're now we're at 26,500 feet. Um, there was a 45 mile per hour wind blowing left to right. And I didn't have the right kind of eyewear on it. It kind of literally slipped my eye. And I, I went snow blind. So if you could imagine, you know, putting a piece of, of writing paper up against your eye, it, it just completely throws off your depth perception. Ooh. Plus, it's like, you know, if you can remember playing and you'd have some little nagging injury, you're oh, yeah. thinking about that nagging injury, right? And you're yeah. trying to overcome yeah. that. And yeah. you, have the, the, you have the wrong energy going to the wrong places. And then, you know, I ended up running out of oxygen. You know, I hadn't eaten and all these other things. It just, I just had no juice on that particular day and i'd done so well over two months except for that day the summit day right that's your game day and every little thing that seems so minute at base camp becomes amplified at altitude because you're well, correct me if i'm wrong but i would imagine that your decision making skills goes way down reaction skill way down basically just your whole immune system your whole defense mechanisms just gets uh muted and now you're snow blind and you have to do the hillary step you have to do all these things you have to do the traverse i mean that traverse who, who i looked at that that's that's a ledge not very wide and if you could if you fall off the traverse yeah you're gone you're looking I mean, you, you're, you're you fall into Tibet. Into, you, fall, yeah. you fall into Tibet. Yeah. 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 So you're looking to on one side, you know, it's, it's so steep up there after the Hillary step, you're looking straight down at, uh, at Tibet and you're looking straight down at, um, and uh, uh, of Nepal. And the thing that makes it really scary in my case is that um, they're, uh, they're, we're different from all the other mountains. I was always tethered to another person. Okay. Yes. And you're going up the mountain on that mountain, you're tethered to the mountain. So we have these things called fixed lines and they're usually about a hundred yards apart. And then there's an ice screw and then the, there's another one. So you're constantly having to hook in and hook out, hook in and hook out. And as I was going up there, my Sherpa, who I just that from this, from high camp to the top and back down, it was the only time I used a Sherpa and he couldn't understand me at all. He didn't understand what my issues were. And so he kept trying to like pull me up the mountain and everything else. I was just like, I just got more rest. I got to stop. I got to stop. And it, that, that's not like my usual thing. I'm usually the first guy charging up the mountain. And as you get higher and higher, especially around the Hillary Step, there's multiple lines that have not been removed from 1972, from oh. 1996. From, so you don't, with my depth perception, I'm looking down trying to, and I don't know which one I'm actually hooking Am I into. hooking into the right line? I mean, I'm hooking in the right line. And so, oh. it, and again, it becomes about conservation of energy because I was out there 18 hours, right? And so conservation of energy to try to figure out how to minimize the most amount of negative things are going through. And I'm just trying to go once, literally one step at a time and like yeah. playing all you the mental gymnastics, oh, you know? Oh, uh, well, you sent me a picture was uh, 
where you're making the final push to the summit and you go at that point, I still had 10 hours to go. And that blew my mind, Mark, because I'm thinking, all right, he's getting to the summit, but people forget, man, you got to get the, the getting to the summit is one thing, the more dangerous uh, component to this climb is getting back down. It is. And that's where most talk people to, die. Yeah. Yeah. So talk to me about that. And were you ever, were you ever thinking you were going to die on that mountain? Yeah, for sure. I had that, that, yeah, you I mean, did. I was, it was right at the front door. I, I've oh. never been to that. And as a matter of fact, my stripper took off on me. I ran out of oxygen. I'm up there. I was the last guy on the mountain on top of the world, Mount Everest by myself. And I'm looking around just going, where is everybody? Wow. Right? Anxiety. And, anxiety and now i'm like I, I i got i like today i just kept saying this i mean how often did you say this which i'm sure you haven't but where you're saying you know today is not the day that mark dies i kept chanting that today is not the day that mark dies and then i'm starting to tap into literally literally all these people like you like my daughters like jamora like who love me and gotta I get down I'm for supporter. them. Gotta get down gotta, for them. No, seriously. I mean, I, it's just like it's amazing. Like, like hmm. living where I live, or it's just like the most important part of it that that meant the most to me were the people I love the most. My my girl Darcy that I'm with now. You know, it's it's so utterly like it's just the most basic things in life came to the forefront. And as I'm coming down, I'm looking straight back up, Loti fourth highest mountain in the world yeah. i'm like you know i don't even care about that anymore i mean it's just like yeah. now 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 it's about if mark can get back yeah. right there was a sense of feeling grateful when you got oh. back down to camp four right oh. and what did that what did that look like when you got there well it, my ideal was far from horrible over you know so i get back there and i just it, it i also remember it was around 6 p.m i started at midnight the night before, 11 30 the night before now it's 6 p.m the next 18 night. hours yeah yeah it was crazy and you've so, gone how far you've gone elevation how far 23,000 uh, no 26,500 feet up to 29,000 feet so I climbed 3,000 feet and back back down and normally that would take me on normal conditions you know four hours three hours it, but that just wasn't my state you know I just was no, no, so were, wiped out you're compromised so then, I was compromised. So now I crawl back in my tent and I had got another tank. So I'd refilled and, and now I'm breathing it. I had it on full flow and now it's about nine o'clock. The storm kicks back in It's blowing 50 miles per hour out yeah. there. And, and now I realize that I run out of oxygen again. And so about 10 o'clock, the uh, lead Sherpa pokes his head in our tent. He goes, Hey Mark, is everything okay? And I go, no, I don't have any O's. He looks at me and he just want to get out of there. He goes, well, we're out of O's. So you're just going to have to make do and share with the other tent mates. And so they went off to sleep. I ended up running around out looking for tanks in my bare feet. I was totally hallucinating. Oh, wow. Yep. And uh, I ended up spending the entire night that night with no oxygen the entire night. And then I get up the next morning and what, is, I'm, what does that feel like Ble breathing in a plastic bag or something? Yeah. You're breathing in a plastic bag. You just can't get a full breath. You know, like you said, it was a third of the oxygen. And this is where there, there's two things, cerebral, which is your brain edema or pulmonary, your lungs edema. It's where uh, people die um, often and they're either their, their brain or their lungs swell because of the lack of oxygen that's coming. And it'd be like, if you jumped into the pool, you know, yeah you there right? yeah so it's yeah. a little bit like that oh man so you wake up the next morning you were saying and i wake up early and i got up and i was still disoriented and i, I can't tell you right now how i actually got another tank but somehow another tank magically appeared and i and i looked over at my my lead shirt but again it was total chaos up there um i had a dead body laying six feet from my tent and i look at him and i'm kind of like shrug like okay what are we doing? He just pointed down. And so I ended up climbing down to camp two by myself. I went back down the low T phase and I thought I was the last guy out of camp. It turned out I was the first guy. Right. And so it, it was just one cluster after another of just so many mistakes. I'm so grateful for now more than them sitting here, having this, this chat with you because I had every reason to still be on that mountain today. Yeah. And not breathing and not air. breathing air. 
Well, I'm thankful you're here, man. And you're sitting in Ecuador. So tell me about this next challenge. Why, why are you there? Uh, I mean, it seemed to me like Mount Everest would be a good place to, to call it a day. Yeah, you know, you would think that, but I found I'm not wired quite like that, right? And so <laughs> there's this whole... There's this whole notion about what's next, right? And so um, I have a birthday. I'm, I'm turning 60 on the 13th next week, okay? And Happy so, birthday coming thank up. Thank you. Thank you. And I, and I said to myself, I've got it because my 50th birthday was a disaster. This is, goes back 10 years ago, right? When I was going through all this mess, right? Sure. And, and I said, you know what? This, this birthday, I want to do something extraordinary. And I want to do something that like, like, not many people do. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know, I spun the, 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 the globe again, and I wanted to do something that didn't involve long-term suffering like Mount Everest. <laughs> and so I said, I'm going to go down and fly down to Ecuador, which I landed today. And I'm going to climb this mountain called Cotopaxi. And um, it's going to be great. I'm going to start up the mountain um, uh, on the 12th of the night, probably midnight on the 12th. And the morning of the 13th, I will drop down and do 60 push-ups. I'm going to videotape that thing and send it to you. Let's go. <laughs> and and send, you, uh, Are you soloing? Um, I, I'll be with one other guy that I climbed with in, in, uh, in, in, uh, uh, in Antarctica. Okay. And, and then I've also brought my gal down to Darcy. And we're going to be, after that, do some, some other hikes and sure. go to a, a spa type thing afterwards. So it's going to be fun. That sounds fun. That sounds like a... That sounds like a hell of a way to uh, spend uh, spend your 60th birthday, brother. You're just getting you're getting you're just getting started, Mark. Let's face it, we're uh, we're works in progress, and you're taking full advantage of uh, of that personal excellence, man. I, I love I love it. It's very motivational for me to to follow you and to you know to talk to you. It's great. I appreciate that. And more, not you know, I'll say this finally. You know, you you. Uh, uh, you're around a lot of athletes. You're in the Ken Hall of Fame. It's just, I, I you know, it's just like I, I always wanted to be in the Hall of Fame. I always wanted to win the Heisman. I don't think either of those two will happen. But, you know, I did what I could do. And I just realized, too, that there's so much in the world that we all haven't done. You don't have to go climb mountains and get cuckoo about that. But, you know, it's learning to how to cook or make a bench or yeah. fly fishing or, you know, there's so many things that we can all can learn. Yeah. And, and it's just so many people have such a narrow, like, like playing in the NFL was the epitome of what I, the, like my Mount Everest, what I can do. And I just came to myself, you know, years ago and said, you know what, that's, I'm not going to live by those rules. I'm going yeah. to try to recreate and pivot and reinvent constantly. And so if you, if you put that in mind, and say, like, look at all the things you haven't done. The list is pretty big out there. A wider perspective of, of, of finding, you know, finding your summit, your personal summit, which you say so well and eloquently. And I think the takeaway for all of us, at least for me, is that the human spirit, the human potential is unlimited. And it's only restricted by your imagination and your fear and so to trust your hopes, not your fears, maybe is the way to go. And it seems like you're doing that, brother. Love that. Love that. Uh, yeah. You know, more that's the reason why you're such a good dude and why you've been so good to me. And, I, and I'm so appreciative of, of, your, of your friendship. Thank you. Have fun. I, I, uh, I enjoyed our talk. We'll do it again soon. Absolutely. Absolutely. Happy, happy birthday. Be safe. Come back to us safely. And if I don't see you in Atlanta, I'll see you in Sun Valley, Idaho. And you will also see a video coming your way at your doorstep with me doing a bunch of push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Mark Daddy. Summit man, summit man. Uh, all right, the summit master's on the way. <laughs> I love you, brother. See you. I love you too. Okay, thanks, buddy.